And as I looked at all the scriptures about repentance, not only did I become convinced that it has to be shared with the lost person, but the number of verses and the weight of the evidence also convinced me that every time I share Jesus with someone, I have to somehow explain this idea of repentance. Now, as I struggled with the question, should repentance be shared with the lost person, I then came to Luke chapter 24. And that's, that passage is just like Matthew 28. It's the Great Commission passage that's in Luke. And so Jesus in Luke 24 says, I want you to go to all the nations. But the unique thing in Luke 24, 47 is Jesus says, I, he includes what he wants that message to be as we go to the nations. And he very clearly commands that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be preached to the nations. And so that convinced me, I, I need to follow Jesus, I need to obey His commands. Then I asked, do we have any examples in Scripture about Gospel presentations that talk about repentance? Yes, we do. <laughs> in Acts 2, after the Spirit comes and all the brothers are speaking in these strange languages, and all the people gather around, what's going on? Peter takes the opportunity to preach the gospel to these people. And he's very strong. And he says to them, this Jesus who you crucified and killed, God has made Lord and Messiah. And I love the next part, the people as they hear, they're just cut to the heart. And they say, brothers, what should, what should we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized. Next chapter, Acts 3, there, uh, Peter is in the temple, he heals a man, the people gather again, he shares the gospel with the people, people as they gather, and at the end of his message he again says, repent, so the times of refreshing can come. Next example with Peter, he goes to Cornelius' household, the Gentiles, starts to share the gospel. Before he even finishes, they receive the Holy Spirit. So he goes back to Jerusalem to give a report. The people in Jerusalem are angry, why are you hanging out with those Gentiles? And he just says, let me tell you, I started to talk about Jesus and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the thing that his critics then say is very interesting in Acts 11. And they say, wow, so I guess God has granted the Gentiles repentance that leads to salvation. Okay, how about Paul? When Paul goes to Athens and he speaks to non-religious people, he speaks to the Athenians. And at the end of his gospel message, he reminds them that there is a judgment to come. And he even tells these, these pagans to repent. The proper response is to repent. Final thing I want to bring up is what, we, what is repentance? Let me first share with you the verse that I think helps me the, the most. What is repentance? In 2 Corinthians 7.10, Paul says a very interesting thing. He describes that there is a godly sorrow 
दिन त्यां and he says that this godly sorrow leads to repentance, which leads to salvation. So it's again a very another very convincing verse about repentance is necessary for salvation. But it it helps us see that there's some sort of godly sorrow that happens. <coughs> and so what I think I gather when I look at scripture is that when a person hears the gospel, uh, there, there is a response that God gives them. And they suddenly, in their heart and mind, see that that sin that they liked to do, they had no problem to do and enjoyed, suddenly they see how awful it is as it affects their God. So it starts in their heart as a godly sorrow, and they suddenly want no part of it. Now the interesting thing though is scripture tells us that repentance always produces fruit. And John the Baptist helps us with that. You may remember the one time when he talks to the religious leaders who come to, to see him. And he says, you brood of vipers, who told you to flee the wrath that's to come? And he tells them, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. So what that means to me in my mind is just as authentic faith and belief in Christ always produces authentic fruit. Authentic repentance also produces a fruit as the person who is struck by the Holy Spirit suddenly turns away from that old life. So you're not telling them you have to get your act together first before you can be a Christian. So you're not telling them that they have to get their right their life right and correct before they can trust in Jesus. But rather the Holy Spirit himself is convicting them in their heart about their sin. Okay, I'm going to wrap up with one final question. According to Luke 15, what do the angels rejoice in heaven about? Can anyone guess? It says, and Jesus says, the angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner who repents. So, Luke 15. so as we today, as we share this message, I ask you to consider that you describe to them as uh, as you give them the message of what Jesus has done and you, you shift what they can do to receive You help them to understand this idea of turning from sin from their, in their heart and turning <coughs> And then the angels rejoice. Right. Thank you for letting me share my thoughts.